place right now in this rain that has hit this house. Deacon Cannon, you feel something new happening, don't you? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to talk to you about today on the subject in the first Samuel chapter 17. Um, I'm going to use one of the young men in the house today as a young man to help me demonstrate what I'm talking about and what God is about to do. And this also is going to correspond with what's going to take place in the matter of hours from now. And it's come on, that's right, praise him. When when we when when we read the book of First Samuel, we encounter the anointing of David in chapter sixteen, and come here, get you, come on. He's been, he's been asking me. I want you to sit over there. Just sit right there where my hat at, right there. Sit next to Charles on the other side. Charles, right there. Not right there, but right over, right there. Yep. So move the hat. Move the hat. Sit right there. We have to understand that there's always an appointment. An appointment. And when there's an appointment, that becomes an arrival. That, that God sets the appointment and we all have an appointment but we haven't arrived yet and so I, 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 if, if, if I would just for a moment before I read in chapter 17 1 Samuel 1 7 16 um, it talks about David is anointed by Saul we understand that David is one of uh, Jesse's children. He's the youngest one. He's the one that don't have that masculine statue that didn't look like he was fit to be uh, the kind of man that his daddy inquired of or his dad want. And always we can say that he was probably, you know, think like, okay, if we didn't get treated like the other brothers, he was treated like a black sheep. The one that had the dirtiest job, the one that had the job to tend to the sheep. And when I say God sets you up, he sets you up. Because before Saul even comes into the picture and, and to anoint David, uh, David is already tending to the sheep. He already had a job before Samuel comes on the scene to anoint him. And I often wonder, wow, Lord, that is amazing because, you know, he never told Samuel exactly who it was. But the Holy Ghost and the oil wouldn't work until that person came. It wouldn't work on his other brothers. It wouldn't work. He didn't feel nothing with those brothers, but he didn't feel nothing with the first brother, the second brother, and so forth and so on. He didn't feel nothing with that, but he goes on. He asks Jesse one more question. Because there are some things in there sometimes, and I don't know why parents are like this, sometimes they're, they're, they get to the point where they're embarrassed of that one child. They don't even claim that child to even be theirs. They don't even want to talk about that child. They simply shun that child. And, and they're just don't, so disappointed about that child for what reason or another. I don't understand. But Samuel asked Jesse, Jesse, is there another son in your household? 
Jesse says, yeah, there's one he's out tending to the sheep. And the problem comes in there because here's the thing that if in, in, in Samuel, he, wouldn't, he, he really wouldn't leave the house because something in his spirit must have told him that this is what the king is. See, the king is always positioning himself for something great. Always positioning himself to ch be challenged by God to do something great. He's always waiting patiently because one, hallelujah, when you're called to do something great, you have to be patient. I love the old song when I say, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Uh, hallelujah. And so God, I, I, I hear God saying in, in, to Jesse, in, to, to Jesse, like, oh, Jesse not really wanting to bring this son over, but... David comes, and David is anointed king over Israel. Now, Samuel is on the mission, and it's not known by Saul yeah, yeah. that Samuel was going to anoint somebody else to be king. Samuel was trusted by the king. Samuel was the highest. Samuel was the, one of the ones that was in the highest place. Really trusted by the king. One of the ones that the king would rely on for prayers. But one of the things we got to understand here is that when sometimes God will call you to do something and make you feel uncomfortable. So, 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 king. David is anointed to be king, but he's not sitting on the throne yet. He's yet but a young man, but there's, there's a challenge. There's a challenge. And then I don't know about y'all. Some of y'all probably watched that Coming to America Part 2 and how he told the, they told the young man, you got to get the whisper, the whisker off the line. The whisker. I can't pronounce it. The who? Who? Whisker? Okay. All right, I can't pronounce the word right, but y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying. Uh, speaking in tongue, then, okay? All right. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So, 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 and he was baffled by the challenge. He looked at his father, and his father said, Oh, I got it on the first try. So, and he didn't want to fail because every young man want to accomplish, outdo their dad. Already on there, he had daughters and his oldest daughter was already uh, ready to take that role if there wasn't a son to take that role. And it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing because you will have people that not believe in them own selves. And to somebody else encouraged them. Oh, yeah. So it didn't show what, what I saw there is different from this. But somebody had to encourage him to get the whisker. The whisper. The, okay, okay. Speaking in tongue again. Amen. Whispers. Whiskers. Oh, okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. But anyways... Only God can choose this kind of king that David was supposed to be. So David is anointed king. He pours the oil over him. In chapter 17, Jesse sends, I'm telling you a story, but I'm going to read a few different verses from there. And I'm going to have good Anthony. He's going to do some things for me. We already talked about it. He's been bothering me about it. He's been wanting to do it for a while now. And I said, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll talk about it. And I refer to him again as mighty man of God. Amen. So, uh, David, he is now without question. And, and, and Pastor Charles, I, I, I would think that David was put on that battlefield on purpose. <laughs> you know, in his mind, he was purposely supposed to go out and give his brother something to eat. And also to bring news back to his dad, what was really going on. Hallelujah. Just to be nosy a little bit. But David was more than just nosy. David was the kind of person where he loves to engage. 
Like I said this morning, I don't know about you, but I came to start something. I came to engage in something. I came to start a fight with a giant. Hallelujah. I know I may not look like a giant slayer. Hallelujah. But don't, don't let your eyes deceive you. Amen. Don't let your eyes deceive you. So, so here in... I'm going to read verse 12 and verse 17. It says, Now David was the son of the Ephanite of Bethlehem of Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and the man went among them for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the name of his three sons that went to the battlefield was Eda and the firstborn, and the next was Abada, and the third was Shema. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. So the three oldest brothers was there. But David went to went and returned from Saul to feed his brothers' sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days and Jesse said unto David his son take now for thy brothers an ephod of a porch of corn pitcher corn porch of corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren and carry these ten cheese unto the captains of the thousands. And, and look how the brethren far and take, take their pledge. Amen. And Saul and I and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Eli, Eli fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with his with his keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him and came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. Now there's always a shout. They're always ready for the battle. They're ready. But how many of you know that everybody that think they're ready ain't ready? For Israel, for, the, for Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left, left his carriage in the hands of the keeper in the carriage and ran into the army and came to salute his brother. And as he took with him, as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gat Goliath by name, out of the army of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Now, I ain't the one to be eavesdropping. But did I hear what this Philistine just said? Pastor Charles, would you read verse 26 for me? 26? Mm -hmm. Verse 26. And David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the, to the man that killeth the Philistine? And he taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Amen, amen, amen. So, so David is inquiring. And the only way someone would inquire about something is if they're ready to do something about it. And, and, and here's, the, here's the thing right here. Until you're ready to do something about it, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Hallelujah. So if so so most 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 parents and, and they they typically if they saw their children being teased or taunted, they're going to stand up for that child. But if that child have big brothers, 
or big sisters that ain't scared of nothing. And they see that that brother and that sisters have a little bit of fear in them. They don't mind stepping up saying, you better watch who you're talking to. You know, those kind of things. So I believe that if this, this was that kind of person, what you would expect it for the big brothers and for the armors and for Saul to do, David was ready to step up to the plate and take on a giant. <laughs> to take on a giant. See, 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 there's some of us, we're ready to run for the hills the minute, minute war comes our way. We're ready to go and find a hiding place. Hallelujah. But sometimes we got to stand up and fight. Sometimes we got to stand up and put our hands up and get ready for the fight. We got to be the ones to engage. See, the only one here that was engaging, that was engaging in the battle was David. David was the only one that was really willing. They went out to the battlefield, but they didn't really go out there to fight. They went out there to stand guard like they were ready to fight and ready to die, but they were more afraid to fight and die. Hallelujah. It, it, the Bible didn't indicate how many of the Philistines came over but Goliath. Hallelujah. Just one man with one other man carrying his shield coming to approach them. See, some of us are afraid of how people look. Don't be intimidated by other people because they look like they got it going on or they may look like they may tell you from limb to limb. It's when you are intimidated that you already lost that battle. It's when you already threw in the towel and has given up. So don't let anything intimidate you. Hallelujah. So come on up here, David. Step right there, step right there, step right there, step right over there, right there, right there. Right there on them two steps right there. You see them steps on them feet on there? Right. On the floor right there, stand right there. So David, he comes and he's standing there. He's, he, he's ready. He, he wants to go to the battle. And, 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 and Deacon Cannon, I'm going to use you and just, just temporarily. You're not Goliath, amen, but I'm just going <laughs> to use your size as a Goliath today amen hallelujah i'm just gonna use you just for that amen hallelujah you will be blessed after this amen hallelujah <laughs> amen so one thing we got to understand here is that 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 if 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 goliath he he would look at he when he by the time he saw david he saw a boy he saw a boy now if i would pastor charles if you would read uh verse 38 for me and I want to show you something and Saul armed David with his armor and he put a helmet of brass upon his head also he armed him with a coat of mail and David girded his sword upon his armor and he, he essayed to go for he had not proved it amen keep going and David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. And he took his staff in his hand, and he chose him five smooth stones. Now, come here, David. Come on, stop right there for a moment. Verse 40, we're going to read that again. Now, come here, David. And you're going to be David. Go around the front right here. I placed in position for you. Now, he said he took in his hand and what? His Those stuff. Five smooth stones. Okay, now if you look down at the bottom of David, you got to look for them right. stones. There are five smooth stones right behind you. If you look, if you look, you'll start seeing stones. Get those stones. They're black. Get those stones. You'll find David there. David, he's all, keep reading, keep reading. Out of the brook, and he put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, <laughs> even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. Get and that sling right there. Put those in your pocket. Those in your pocket. Hallelujah. Yep, get that. Yep. That's going to be your sling. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Just, 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 just wrap it around your hand like you're getting ready to throw something. Just wrap it around you. Just take it and just wrap it around your hand like this. Just like that. Just wrap it around your hand just like that. I want to show you something. Just like that. You're getting ready. That's, that's the hand you throw with. Mm. You le he left-handed? Okay, all right, all right, all right. That's good, that's good. Not many left-handers, amen. 
Hallelujah. Read for me, Pastor. And he drew near to the Philistine. Go and walk a little bit closer. Walk there with your, walk there with your, it's, 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 you, you the grandmother, or the auntie right there. Walk there by Denise. Walk right now, I'll straight there. Stop right there by Denise. Go ahead. Keep going. Right here. Got, stand in the middle of the aisle, though. Stand in the middle of the aisle, though. Middle. Hallelujah. Some of y'all may not be able to see this. Hallelujah. Now, I've written out, now, listen, to, listen to me, David. David, look at me. Look at me, David. I don't want you to throw the rock for real. <laughs> don't throw the rock for real. I'm just going to put that out there. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> you can wind that thing up, but don't throw the rock. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Like we need deacon right there every Sunday. Amen. We need it of God the door. You can take one rock out your hand, out your pocket. But don't throw the rock. <laughs> amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, now don't put the rock in the sling. Just hold it in one hand. And I just want you to just just fakely like you're winding your sling up. Amen. <laughs> All right, all right. Now, hold on. Now, 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 go ahead and read for me, Pastor Charles. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. Keep going. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And the Philistine looked about and saw David. He disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. Hey, Amen. Look at that. So, so, Goliath. Tori, Tori, come here, come here, Tori, come here. I'm using this is my daughter. Come on, Tori. See now, David, David, he didn't need no shields. I'm sorry, I just had to wake you up. But anyways, <laughs> now go stand in front of Deacon Cannon with that shield. Go right down and out. Now keep going, keep going, keep going. It ain't that heavy. It ain't that heavy. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, right keep there, going. Right amen, right amen, there. amen. Stand right there. And he said, the one that bore the shield. So Goliath's army was so heavy that he couldn't carry his own shield. He had to have someone positioned in front of him with the shield. So he's never the one that's out there in front at all times. It's the one that's holding the shield. So, 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 but see, here's the thing. David, no, read for me, Pastor. Read. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Mm -hmm. then, David, then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And listen what David said. He said, this day will I, will the Lord deliver thee into my hand and I will smite thee. Now, David, you got to start winding that rag up, wind the rag up, start, start winding that up like this. Just come on. You got to start winding up. Hallelujah. This day unto the fowls of the air, into the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth would know that there is a God in Israel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so here's David. David being just a young man out there talking to a giant like he ain't scared of nobody. But one thing that you got to understand before David went to that battlefield, David already let the men in Israel know what he was about. I took out a lion and I took out a bear. Hallelujah. While I was tending to my daddy's sheep, I was fighting lions and bears. So this uncircumcised giant that defiles the army of the Lord, today, today is the day I will smite thee. Hallelujah. And it says all the assembly, come on, you got to wind that thing up. Wind that up, David. Wind, you got to wind it up like you're ready. Just come on like you're playing them drums. Wind that thing up. Wind that thing up. Wind that thing up. Hallelujah. Wind that thing up. Hallelujah. Oh, you, you making small loops. I believe David made some big loops. 
David went, look, look at me, David. You went all the way like this. We got to understand that we're fighting devils. Hallelujah. That we're not even ready for right now. But God will raise up a David in your life. God will raise up a David that whenever you go up against the enemy, hallelujah, there'll be a David that don't mind getting out there, standing up on the floor, standing in the battlefield, ready to wind up, ready to stir some stuff up. Woo! Listen, 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 listen. I believe that while David was winding it up, on one side, hallelujah, was the Philistine. And on this side was those chickens that were hiding behind the line over there. But David being off there all by himself, hallelujah, what we thought was all by ourselves. When we thought we was doing this all by ourselves, he had what he, God sent an angel that stood over him. That while he was winding that thing up, while he was getting ready to launch that thing into that Goliath's forehead. Now listen, listen real soft. I'm going to share something with you. My daughter has but a small shield. But the shield that the man that went before Goliath stood taller than him. So David was a marksman when it came to a slingshot in a rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was the one that he was a sniper. Hallelujah. He was the one that practiced. Hallelujah. Guerrilla warfare. He was the one that didn't mind standing up. Hallelujah. Hiding out in the bushes and winding up with all those branches. He was the one that didn't mind standing up. Hallelujah. Right behind this big brother. Because if his big brother lost a fight, he didn't mind standing up. Hallelujah. You knocked him down, but now you got to knock me down. Hallelujah. So, so. Goliath was just the one that he had a sword in one hand and a staff in another and all that weight on him. Now, now David, his slingshot, he had to wind it up with all the strength that he had because his, his, the rock that David had had to penetrate the metal that was covering Goliath's face. <laughs> because every time those kind of men went on a battlefield, uh, I believe the army was just a temporary uh, 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 object of just saying, I'm really scared of this person. Hallelujah. If I didn't have this armor on, I was more afraid than anything. But that shield that was covering his face is something about that rock that David, when he began to wind that thing up, uh, that's why I'm telling every sanctified Holy Ghost filled saint, hallelujah, that's in this room right now. You got to put your faith in the rock. Hallelujah, that when you put your faith in the rock, hallelujah, I don't care what the enemy got on his, hallelujah, it's going to take him down. All I got is a rock. So Pastor Charles, look. The rock had to either go around the shield to the forehead of Goliath or it had to go through the shield through the forehead of Goliath but there was power in the rock. There was power in the rock. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. I'm standing here because I got power in my hand and if one is not good enough I'm going to tell you something. That while I was at the brook, I picked up five rocks, uh, five smooth stones. Uh, because if I mix you with one rock, I'm fast enough to go in my pocket and pull out another one. Uh, I got five chances. Uh, but if I take you out with one rock, uh, I know you got four more brothers. I know you got four more brothers. Hallelujah. Y'all can take a seat. I know you got four more brothers. But I got four more rocks. Because if they, if they try to run up, they go get done up. 
just like I'm about to do you. You got to be bold about it. You got to be courageous about it. Woo. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God, my God, my God. And the story just didn't end with a rock. Mm. But I believe that when David picked up those rocks, he picked up the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then those last two were grace and mercy. I don't know about you, but I got grace and mercy on my side. He promised that it should follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I've I done all that to show you this right here. That look. Sometimes we got to fool the enemy. He probably thought he already won the battle when David put his hand in his pocket he didn't know what he was up to just because I came out here looking like I was empty handed don't you dare think hallelujah that you're about to win this battle because I'm out here on the other side of the field I'm closer to the Philistines than I am to the Israelites right now. I'm in danger seen and unseen, but I have a God that's standing behind me. And his name is Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. You got somebody behind you named Jesus. Look, I'm coming to a close. Whew. See, when this pandemic is over I'll really be able to dress them up because I got little costumes with those things on it in there hallelujah but I want to let you know today all of you all that are going to be ordained today whether it's from deacons to ministers to pastors God didn't call you because you was a chicken. He called you because you was a believer. He called you because you believed that if God before me, then who dare to be against me? Hallelujah. Everybody standing. I'm, we're going to come into a close. Hallelujah. So such a time as this such a time as this mm. is something that when there is oil applied to your life when there is oil applied to your life it changes you. Now, I remember last year, my daughter Tori and my grandson, Jeff, they were over at the house and my son and my son-in-law, they, they had this one mask and I came up with a little thing to scare my daughter Tori and my grandson. And I'm going to show you something here. That my daughter Tori 
never got to see what I put in there. But when she saw Jeff run out of that kitchen at 150 miles per hour, she decided to run with him. <laughs> so whatever he seen, it was good enough to let her know that you need to follow me. <laughs> and so I'm saying that to say this. That some of us react off other people's reactions. If you see them scared of something, you'll right away because you're not sure what they're running for. You're going to run right along with them. Because some people are curious. And it's, it's you know, it's sometimes it don't pay to be curious. Because even if I told my wife, not to, to run with me. Even if I forgot to tell her to run with me, she have common sense to know that if I'm hightailing it out of there, she need to start hightailing it right behind me. <laughs> Amen, honey? But some people are curious, and I believe David was that curious one. David was that curious one. Now, he was curious to the point where even if he saw you running, I got to see what you're running from. Because I might can just beat it. That's the kind of person David was. But God has given each of you common sense. Enough sense to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and know when to walk away. Hallelujah. God has given you that. But God has also given you boldness. To stand up against the wiles of the enemy. I want to pray right, right where you're standing at. I want to pray for you. And I want you to believe that today is the day. In spite of what happened last night, in spite of what happened last week, I want you to believe that today is today. I want you to listen to me. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for your people right now that God that you would touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet that you would meet every need in their life right now some of us God our needs have become 911 some of us God our need has become we don't know where our next meal is going to come from God we need a touch from you so, God, I'm asking that right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that God, as you're meeting their needs, they have been praying for their sons and their daughters. I'm praying that, God, that you will meet their personal need, their family need, their sibling needs, that you would touch in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray also, God, hallelujah, for those that are not here in this building. That God, that you would regulate their blood, God, that you would touch their minds, that you would touch their spirit, God. That you would give them the strength that they need to stand in these last and evil days. In spite of what the doctor has concluded, God, you still got the last say so. I thank you, God, because I can say today that this is it. God has already covered me. God has already covered it. God has already taken care of my issue. And if you believe that today, I want you to give God a hand praise and a praise in this place today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, as we begin this next service that's going to happen just in a little while from here, just in a few hours, God, I pray that, God, that you will continue to encourage your, your people in this room. That I recognize before any great thing happen in our life, there's going to be discouragement. But discouragement didn't win. We are David in this house. We got, we got Davids in us right now. We didn't let the enemy win that battle in the mighty name of Jesus. And today, God, we can claim the victory. We're standing strong. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. God, I pray for your protection over each of us. 
Those that are watching via Facebook Live and YouTube, God, I pray for your protection right now. That, God, that you will cover them, that you will look over them, that you will watch them, that you will protect them, that you will guide them. Hallelujah. And that troubled mind that some of us are dealing with right now, that mind that won't let us breathe, that mind that won't let us think for ourselves, I pray for that troubled mind right now. I declare that that person is free. I declared hallelujah, just like the word was spoken, hallelujah, to King Jehoshaphat. Hallelujah. You know, Bochata, that the battle is not yours, it belongs to the Lord. I declare today that God, after everything that we went through, that there will be peace, there will be joy, there will be hope for tomorrow. Hallelujah. As we continue to pray for those that have been affected by the hurricane, God, you look over right now. You cover right now, God. I know they're still finding bodies, hallelujah, in places, hallelujah, but God, you cover right now. Hallelujah. Cover the bereaved family in all your land, God. Cover right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Cover, God. Cover them with your blood, God. Cover them, let them know that this, hallelujah, too shall pass. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I declare that right now, hallelujah, all the funerals have been canceled. Hallelujah, because God, you are putting life back into a dead situation right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. That person, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that's laying in the hospital. That person that's laying at home all alone. Hallelujah, that person that's in hospice. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord breathing breath back into your lungs, breathing life back into your body. Hallelujah, reversing your condition right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I hear the Lord saying right now, hallelujah, somebody eviction notice is being overturned right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God has changed your landlord's mind. The mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Give God praise. Ooh. Now, all your hearts and minds are in. We remain standing for the benediction. Minister Harris, I see you doing exactly what you've been asking God for. I see you doing it. Don't allow your faith to twinkle. Don't allow it. There's a light in you. There's a light in you. There's a light in you. You're bigger you're better, you're stronger, there's a light in you. And it's not too late. God got you covered. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, as we get ready to depart from this place but never from your presence, may your rest rule and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen. Come on, give God praise.